This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by lynda.com, the unparalleled online video training library. For a free 10-day unlimited trial, visit lynda.com slash macvoices. And by Casper, a better mattress for a better night's sleep. To find out more, try one for 100 days and get a $50 discount, visit casper.com slash macvoices. Welcome back to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Mac community. I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, another great Take Control title, another great Take Control author, Mr. Jeff Carlson. Jeff, it's great to see you. Hi, good to see you again. Yeah, you've, you've been busy again. Always busy. Yes, yeah. it's, it's good to be busy. <laughs> it does seem like it. So this time, the new title, uh, the, new, the new title is actually a revised title uh, of Take Control of Your Digital Photos on a Mac. Does this make this second edition, third edition? Which edition is this? Second edition. Second edition. Yeah. Okay. The big, the big 2.0 of the book. Wow. Okay. Well, congratulations on <laughs> thank on, you <laughs> on, on shipping 2.0. Um, <laughs> Jeff, what I, when I heard this was going to be revised, in some ways I was a little surprised because it, it well, I wasn't surprised in that things are changing constantly. It seems like in the digital photo world right now, but I was surprised that this particular book was going to be updated because other than photos, the Apple's Photos application, mm -hmm. I didn't know if there'd be a lot new to talk about just yet. Am, am, well, I, am I wrong about that? Uh, you're totally wrong. You can't. No, <laughs> no, 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 you're right. Figures. <laughs> Figures. Um, well, so, so yeah, the, 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 one of the big things that's changed in the last, uh, so it's now been um, two years since the first edition. Um, and what's, what's great about a book like this is, you know, the, the, the techniques and the steps that I uh, present are really designed to, you know, help you develop a workflow that works so that you'll actually, you know, manage your photos and not forget about them, et cetera. Um, and so in the first edition, um, you know, I included information about iPhoto and Aperture. Well, those are now gone. Uh, replaced by photos. So a, a big portion of the book is is updating it for how to work with photos and um, you know the the different ways that that photos treats um, you know organizing images and editing images compared to the others. Um, that all gets rolled in. Um, but another thing that's really changed in the last two years is the fact that. There's a lot more focus on online or mobile access to your photos. So when I uh, did the first edition, there were you know some things that that would do online stuff. Um, I think uh, you know Google Plus had a photo component. Um, Dropbox had a way that you could uh, upload things. Um, there were a bunch of services that don't even exist now. Uh, that their goal was to be able to to take your photos so that they're not locked into one program and make them available on your device without having to like sync through iTunes or anything like that. But at the time, um, like everything was really in flux. And so, um, I sort of, you know, just punted in, in just a little bit. Oh wait, <laughs> sorry. The <laughs> Siri just popped up and <laughs> and so it started transcribing me. Shut up, Siri. Um, so, so I, I sort of punted because there was no real definitive uh, answer for you know how do you take control of your of your mobile photos. And so that was a big focus on on this version 2.0. Is okay now that things have settled down a bit. Um, what are some good solutions for having you know mobile access to not just the photos you've taken in the last month or so, but going back years, because we're all much more mobile than we were even two years ago. So you bring up a really interesting point that a lot of us, a lot of us, not you as a professional photographer or someone that is really into it, but a lot of us, our phones are our primary photography device. Do you, I assume that you, you are covering moving the phones, excuse me, moving the photos from the phone to your Mac or to some of the online services as as well as working them around so you can edit them, tweak them, and, and make them better. Yeah. Uh, so so the the real thrust of the book is, um, I mean, it, 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 sounds, it sounds almost like 
the stuff that you don't want to deal with, which is, you know, how do you take the photos that you captured, whether it's on a phone or whether it's on a DSLR or whatever, um, and what do you do with those photos? Because one of the things that you do is you um, you want to to you know, obviously look at them and 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 edit them and and share them with other people, but because we take so many photos, we also need to figure out a way that we can um, find them later. So you know, I, I'm sure that you've run into this problem before. We all have, where you're like, okay, I want to get the picture of my you know uh, kid's Halloween costume from three years ago, and so you know. That, that actually is is fairly easy because you know like what sort of date you're hitting. But what if it's, you know, um, I need a picture of my father-in-law from, you know, the vacation we took to France or, you know, whatever. Um, you know, that's, that's a lot harder to find. And what you end up doing is you just sort of scrolling, scrolling, scrolling through, you know, photos or iPhoto or whatever, trying to find it. And so... A big part of the book is there are things that you can do to make all of this stuff more easily accessible and make it so that you can just find things quickly without having to, you know, be that pro photographer who has to meticulously, you know, tag everything because, you know, most of us are, are just not going to do that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it, it's true. There are lots of different ways that you can, that you can do organization. And, you know, even just sort of like, uh, like, like talking about this right now, I'm like, oh, yes, we want to organize your photos and <laughs> tag them with keywords. <laughs> and, uh, you know, pretty soon you're asleep. But the thing is, there comes a point when you're going to want to have done some of that in order to get your photos later or be able to pull up something quickly now. Or, you know, for example, you know you have a photo, even if it's like a month old, you know it's on your Mac. You know it's, maybe it's on an external drive. And you don't have your Mac or your drive with you. But you need that photo right now. Like, how do you get to it? That's, that's the conundrum of, of, of being more mobile is, now that we have like all of our addresses and calendars and, and you know, uh, music, now that all that's available to us anytime, we want our photos to do that too. So that's, that's a lot of what, what this edition tries to address. Did I even answer your question? I think I, I, I went off on a tangent. No, no, you, you did because I think you, okay. you've already given me more things to think about. That, and, and first of all, I want to say I can't believe it that the book is two years old. I mean, that that blows me away. I know. And I, and I was sitting here thinking, try, trying to remember the name of some of those services because there were some really great services out there. And of yeah. course, they promised to keep your photos safe and, and available forever. Mm -hmm. um, you saw how that worked out. So <laughs> that's, that's one of my concerns right now is trying to figure out just how to take old family photos as well as what I have. I'm, I'm taking this, af took this afternoon get them organized, but also keep them safe. And, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'd be interested in your opinions as to do you, uh, what your thinking is as to sharing them, not sharing them, saving them with Apple, mm -hmm. with Google, with Dropbox, with, with some of these other services, with Flickr uh, is, is one mm -hmm. that I've been using for a while. So is that a good idea? Is it best to start spreading them out and save multiple sets to all these services? Um, where well, do we go from here? The, the, the tricky part is, is that a lot of these are really sort of based on their own ecosystems. And so it's hard to just say, like, like, like for example, um, in, in the book, I make a case for uh, using uh, Adobe Lightroom as your um, library manager of choice. And I, I explain why. Um, you know, I, I also explain how to do it in photos and Photoshop elements. Um, but there's a very clear, like, like that's the one that I've, I've drawn to as, as the solution. With the online services, there isn't really one that I can say, okay, you know what, go install this and you'll be set. Because a lot of them are sort of tied to their own thing. So, for example, um, if, if you use uh, Apple's Photos app on the Mac, um, the best way to extend that um, to to mobile is to do iCloud Photo Library, 
Well, if you use Lightroom on the Mac, iCloud Photo Library doesn't really work for you because you can't you know, pull things from Lightroom into iCloud Photo Library and, and synchronize edits and all of that. Um, you know, if you use Google Photos, for example, um, which I, I particularly like, there are many, um, many features of it that I like, but even so, that kind of sits off to the side of, of Lightroom. So what you can do is you, you can point Google Photos at the, the folder where you store your, your, um, your, your photo library um, or, you know, at specific dates or, you know, what have you. But then they, they sort of diverge from there. You can't, you know, edit something in Lightroom and expect that it will show up in, in uh, Google Photos. Now, the, the other possibility is Adobe has their own service called um, Lightroom Mobile. And in that case, something that's in your Lightroom library um, can show up in Lightroom Mobile. And when you edit it in either place, all the edits get synchronized very quickly and it's like really slick. The problem is there's no way to just put your entire library. You can, you have to, you know, sort of pick and choose. So that's a really long way of saying that, that unfortunately there's no one good solution, but I run through a lot of the possibilities and a lot of the, the, um, a lot of the solutions that can work together in a way that, um, like for example, um, with, if your your library is set up in Lightroom, what I do is um, I have my Lightroom library. Uh, sometimes I will use Lightroom Mobile to do some spot editing or something on my iPad if I don't want to, you know, have my 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 full you know computer and everything with me. Um, but then I also um, have Google Photos upload everything. Now I'm not even expecting that that's going to remain in sync. But what's nice about it is that that provides kind of a a, a, a fail-safe, um, you know, last-ditch backup. And I'll, I, I say backup with a giant um, asterisk because there's <laughs> issues with that. Um, but, you know, it's such that, that if I am out and about and I want to edit something on my iPad or my iPhone um, and share it with somebody... I'll, I know that it will be in the um, the Google Photos, and I can just do an edit right there, and then maybe bring that into Lightroom later. So it it gives me the flexibility of being mobile and the flexibility of having you know tens of thousands of of photos available to me because of of the cloud, even if it doesn't quite go as far as I would um, optimally like by having everything nice and synced cleanly. Today's edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Casper, a better mattress for a better night's sleep. To find out more, try one for 100 days and get a $50 discount. Visit casper.com slash macvoices and use the code macvoices when you place your order. There are plenty of ways to increase your productivity, but there's one sure way to kill it, and that's by not getting a decent night's sleep. Now, I've been known to go to bed late and get up early, so that makes it all the more important that the sleep I do get is as good as I can make it. That's why I love my Casper mattress. You might not think that a mattress can make that big a difference, and you would be dead wrong. I've spent too many nights on less than ideal mattresses that leave me more tired than when I went to bed, and with an aching back to boot. Casper has worked hard to create a new hybrid mattress that combines premium latex foam with memory foam to give you better nights and brighter days. Obsessively engineered and at a shockingly fair price, as they would say. Even better, you don't have to go get a Casper mattress. Your Casper mattress will come to you. Just visit casper.com slash macvoices, pick the size, and get $50 off your purchase by using the code macvoices. A few days later, your mattress will arrive at your doorstep and you will have 100 days to try it. No showrooms, no delivery fees, no delivery men to scrape your walls. In the amazingly unlikely event that your Casper mattress isn't everything I say it is, you can return it painlessly. They'll even send someone to pick it up. 
But that's not going to happen, believe me. You're going to love your Casper mattress as much as I do. So, with no risk, $50 off, free shipping, delivery to your door, and 100 nights to give it a try, what are you waiting for? Go to casper.com slash macvoices right now, use the code macvoices for the discount, and your Made in America Casper mattress will be on its way. You can thank me later. Speaking of thanks, thanks to Casper for a great night's sleep and for their support of Mac Voices. So what I think I just heard you say, or at least maybe maybe I'm running off on my own little workflow <laughs> as, <laughs> as you're describing this, is that maybe you set up a workflow, uh, sort of a workflow that can be daisy chained together, that maybe you use one service or set of, 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 uh, of tools for the, the capture and editing, and then another, another service for sort of the archive and the sharing? Yeah, sort of. It, it kind of depends on, on, on where you are. So, you know, in, in my case, um, I do most everything through Lightroom uh, on my Mac. Um, but I can't have everything in my Lightroom library with me uh, and, and mobile. So, you know, let's say I am away from my Mac um, and I, I just have my, my iPhone or my iPad. And my wife says, hey, do you have a picture of um, our daughter uh, Halloween three years ago? Because I was, I was you know, mentioning it and, and uh, grandma wants a picture. So normally I would have to, you know, say, yeah, we have it somewhere. And I can, you know, once I'm back home, I can load up my library and do all of that. Um, but, you know, grandma's impatient. She's got to have her pictures of the kids. <laughs> so, um, so what I can do then, because I know that, that Google Photos has my, my library uploaded, I can, on my iPad or my iPhone, I can go find that photo and, you know, um, maybe do some editing to it if I think it needs it because it has, you know, some pretty um, good editing controls, not, not quite to the, to the caliber of Lightroom, but it's, it's, it's you know, pretty good for your, your basic adjustments, excuse me, and, and just have that and send it off to grandma, you know, within four or five minutes. So, so it's, it's the solution that, that it's tackling is being able to access your entire photo library at any time that you want, even if it's not ideally synced the way that, that, that I would prefer. Um, and you know, so, so the, the thing with Google Photos is that um, you can pay for storage and it'll upload everything, um, you know, raw files and, and, and originals. Um, or you can use it for free and have unlimited uploads, but everything is, is converted to compressed JPEG files. Um, and so I just do the, the, um, the compressed JPEG file option because it's free, um, because it's, it's unlimited. And the the quality of the of the compression is actually really very good. So, you know, if I if I had to go in and do some you know really uh, core editing on a, a landscape shot where um, I would get a lot of benefit of working with the raw file, then I would wait and do that in Lightroom. Um, but having even the, the the compressed JPEG versions uploaded to Google, like those are good enough such that if, you know, something catastrophic happens, a meteor lands on my house and, you know, pieces of it break off and destroy my offline backups. Like if there's nothing left, then I still have everything in Google and it's, it's you know, it's, it's good enough as a backup. So that's why I, you know, added a big asterisk for backup. It's, it's not a real backup, but it, it is a, a good enough last ditch um, off-site copy of your photos, which is also important. You also hit one of the questions I did want to ask about this whole process, and that is, what what are you saving? Are you saving the raw files if you shoot in raw, or are you just saving JPEGs? From what you said, with at least that particular part of your solution, you are you are saving the just the compressed JPEGs to, mm -hmm. to Google. But do you make archives, or do you do you have an option for handling the raw files? 
Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. The, um, the, there's a whole chapter on on backup and, and ar- archiving in the book. Um, you know, the, the 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 Google solution is you know the the um, the last ditch. Um, but I, I also have um, um, like hard disk backups of my photo library that are separate from my my sort of normal you know computer backups. Um, I have uh, offline backups through C- Crash Plan, so you know there there are several levels of of being able to you know access those original files. Um, and what what something like like Google Photos brings, um, or then there's another another service that I, I talk about called Mylio, which is pretty cool. Um, it, what what those bring is you know not just here is is an offsite backup of your work, which is important, but here are are you know interesting ways to to interact with your library. So one of the reasons I really like Google Photos is that um, it has a pretty good search function, um, but not just that, that you can search for things. It's scanning your library and it's finding things and applying keywords based on that. So even though um, one of the, the surprises when I started investigating this in depth is that you can't actually define any keywords or do any of that sort of tagging, um, what Google will do is it's it's you know harnessing its massive um, you know backend processing power, and looking at photos and say oh well, this one has what looks like water these are are photos with trees uh, you know these are photos with children and so you know if you're looking for a photo of a you know uh, a marina by the sea it'll probably pull up a whole bunch of things even if you had never tagged it. Which is it's it's interesting in the sense that, you know, Google's approach is that okay, normal people don't want to have to do tagging, and so we're going to just handle that for them, and it it works you know to to some extent with the trade offs of you know not having the originals and and all of that if 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 you go with the free version, um, you know and and it also does like fun um. Uh, editing things. There, there's this thing called the assistant, and um, if, for example, you upload like uh, you know a series of, of video clips all shot within the, a couple of hours during a day, it'll make a movie for you. Like it'll cut together a movie and have background music and everything. Um, if you have like, let's say you're you're shooting um, in a, a burst mode where you know you're shooting like three or four photos per second trying to you know capture some sort of action well it will take those and turn those into an animated g- uh, gif excuse me um, and so you have like a little animation of, of that sequence even though it wasn't shot as as a, uh, a video so you know little things like that that are, are are fun and sort of add to the experience while also you know sort of working t- to the side of of the the core of, of of the book is you know managing your own photo library. I, I can't leave this part of the discussion without asking about yeah. about Google because anytime you say Google now, uh, yeah, people get a little you know they get a little crazy. Um, yes. So uh, concerns over privacy, concerns mm-hmm. over what what kind of information you're giving Google through giving them your photos, especially I mean. The, the 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 background processing you talked about sounds fantastic mm-hmm. from a user standpoint, but I can also see some ways that maybe they're they're gathering up lots of information about me as the individual who uploaded those photos. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, maybe they decide that if I take a lot of photos of Paris, that I must love Paris. I'm not sure, and and therefore can feed me French ads. I mean, I'm, right. make, I'm making that up, but that's kind of the concern I'd be, I'd have. Oh, that's that, that that's not out of the realm of possibility. Um, yeah, that that is also one of the trade offs. Um, uh, so far, Google has been actually. I, I would say the people of Google have have gone out of their way to say, um, you know, Google Photos is not tied to any of that. That um, you know they're they're not harvesting data, they're not using it to serve ads. Um, that like they've 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 kind of firewalled the Google Photos service so that it 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 just does this thing, 
and you know it it brings more people to Google. It gives people you know a way to to do that. Um, I am more than happy to say you know they very well could change their mind because it's Google. You know, in a couple of years they'll be like, hey, you know those those photos that you uploaded? Well, we can tell you when you know you're you know near some place that that has a special taco sale. You know, yeah. whatever. <laughs> um, and so, you know, and, and in which case, you know, it, it's going to be like, all right, well, you know, I'm, I'm yanking everything off and stop stopping the service. Um, you know, I, I think if, you know, if, if people are, are squishy about not wanting to, to even, you know, step into that possibility, totally fine because um, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a concern right now. I think, you know, I'm, I'm being optimistic and, and, and uh, you know, choosing to to believe that they are actually you know a, a, abiding by these these firewalls that they're putting in place um if not then you know uh, move on to something else um th this other service milio which is uh, it's interesting um it's also an online thing um one of the things that's interesting about it is that they they don't really try to be a, a cloud storage provider. Um, when you have an account with them, you have like uh, five or ten or fifteen gigs, depending on on the the level that you you pay for, um, of of online storage. But that's it. And the the whole point of of Milio is it's it's all peer to peer. So if you set up you know Milio on your Mac. And you feed it your your photo library, and then you open the Mylio app on your iPad. It's copying the data from your Mac to the iPad, and you know compressing it so it actually fits on an iPad. Um, but it's it's all doing it peer to peer. It's not it's not running it through through Mylio. So you know that that's like the the anti Google, and that you know no, we don't have any of your photos unless you choose to to upload you know, some favorites or something that you want to have offline or whatever. Um, so that's, you know, that's, that's kind of interesting. I mean, it's one of the, 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 the trade-offs because we have um, this desire to have photos on our, our mobile devices. Um, and, you know, we don't have our own personal cloud devices. And so you kind of have to figure out, okay, who, who do we like working with? Um, you know, if, if you use, um, Apple's photos app and iCloud photo library, um, you know, like that's probably enough. That's, that, that's turning out to be, you know, a, a great service as long as you're, you're in that ecosystem. Um, I also touch a little bit on, um, like, uh, F Flickr and Dropbox. And ultimately I, I sort of took them out of the running because they're just, um, uh, file storage, basically. Um, Flickr, uh, they bought a service called Carousel and Carousel gives you a way to, you know, again, upload a whole bunch of photos from, from your, your Mac or your, your iOS device. Um, it can do it automatically stores it at Flickr. Um, and, uh, and uh, I'm sorry, Dropbox. <laughs> See, <laughs> there are too many. Yeah. Uh, Dropbox, Dropbox and Carousel can upload your, your, your files automatically and you open the Carousel app and you can access them. Um, but it's basically like, okay, and here you can look at them and you can scroll through all the dates. Like, like there's no real interesting way to, to find things. Um, if you're an Amazon Prime member, Amazon has Amazon Prime Photos. And that's just, you know, you get unlimited storage and that's it, you know. So, um, I, I, those services ha have their place. Um, Flickr also, um, you know, they, they have automatic uploading. Um, but the ones that I cho chose to talk about were ones that kind of did a little bit more and really, you know, helped you, you know, quote, take control of your digital photos. So, <laughs> so what you did there. Yeah. That's yeah. good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 I, I'm anxious to, to get a hold of the book and, and kind of go through it. Um, because it, it does seem like every, every single service has a trade off of some kind. And mm -hmm. it's, it's not even a case of which one is best. It's which one of the trade offs 
which one or ones of the trade-offs can you live with the, the most? The one thing about about Google, just to, to pick on Google for a mm-hmm. little bit, is yeah. once you you know once that horse is out of the barn, once you've uploaded the, uploaded those photos, you might be able to delete them from your account, but the odds are they're sitting on a Google server somewhere. Yeah. So you know you're pretty much done. Probably you can say the same thing with any uh, with any cloud service, but it yeah. just they seem to have a, a penchant for just holding on to everything, you know, and yeah. not not deleting anything. So. And, and Apple, you know, I mean, to be fair, sometimes Apple tends to lose focus on certain things, and their performance with the cloud stuff hasn't been as good as it could have been. Um, yeah. I, I'd like to think we're seeing some of that change, but you know, with with iCloud Drive, it seems to be a lot more solid. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know, and Adobe. Well, Adobe's a graphics software company. Now suddenly they're in the cloud business. Should I worry? Probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, what's been interesting about this, this whole, this whole, um, uh, you know, niche in, in the, the, the market about all these is that, you know, the, the companies that, that um, initially started out and, and were either bought or failed, um, they did so because um, of, you know, the, the, the cloud storage aspect, like it's, it, it gets to be very expensive to store a lot of, of image files. I mean, you know, you're talking literally terabytes, um, hundreds of gigabytes at least from from even, you know, normal people um, over time. And so, you know, like, like storage is just expensive. And so I think that's why it's shaken out that, you know, the, the people who, who are still in this are, you know, Apple and Google and uh, Flickr because they've they've been there for a long time. You know, Dropbox has has all sorts of you know um, storage uh, uh, capacity. Um, you know, like it's sort of needed to to um, what's the right word? Basically, have have like like the big elephants stabilize the this this part of the of, of the photo market to make it work um you know and you know the, of course you know the, there's always the 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 option of you you don't use any of the online things and that's you know that's totally fine too um but you know i mean we're we're more connected and um you know it's 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 just sort of the way things are headed and um especially with you know i mean not to just you know make this a google love fest but um you know i i like a lot of the intention behind google uh the the google photos group because they are you know really trying to think of 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 new ways to manage vast quantities of 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 photo data um you know by by taking advantage of you know a lot of that that back end processing and you know hey you know we know that computers are are fast enough and smart enough to you know pick out a photo that includes uh people in it and we you know computers can can actually once you show it you know identify somebody can pick out that person in other photos um so you know why not uh, be able to say, you know, these are photos that are in forests, and these are photos of sunrises and beaches and things like that, which which you know Google can can sort of subcategorize, and and do all that work for you. Um, one of the one of the things that I, I go back to in the book quite often is, um, you know, we are using these computers and computers were designed to do a lot of this work for us. And yet there's so much of this work that, you know, especially with photos that we end up having to do ourselves, you know, like, like why should you go and, and have like a fantastic day photographing some beautiful event or place or whatever, and you get back to your house or your hotel room and, you know, you got to process things and you got to, you know, like, (laughs) Like, like to do it right and, and, you know, not just sort of end up with a, you know, the, the giant chaotic shoebox. Like there, there are things that you have to do to make it more useful later. Otherwise later you're going to end up wasting a lot of time because you didn't, you know, do a few things before. Well, you know, at the end of the day, I think very few of us, myself included, 
you know, we don't want to like sit down and spend three hours tagging and organizing and, and, and doing all of that stuff. Um, and so you put it off. You're like, okay, well, yeah, I shot, you know, 400 photos today. That's not too bad. I'll, I'll deal with this next weekend. I've got some free time. You take some more pictures in the meantime, next weekend rolls around. Oh, I can't do it this weekend. I've got to rake leaves. I've got to, you know, do all this stuff. And, and it, it just keeps getting pushed out until you've got this mass of photos that you don't know where anything is. You know, you took a picture, you know, you took some really good pictures that one day. If you could only see them again or, you know, do something with them again. And so the whole point of the book was there are things that you can do to make this so that it's not this, this onerous task. Um, th there are things you can do, like, for example, um, you can apply some, some metadata when you import um, your, your images. So, you know, let the computer handle that part. And if you do nothing else, at least you're, you know, two steps ahead of, of, of the person who doesn't do anything with them. And that way, by, by you know, taking a lot of these little steps um, and, and doing the, the, the workflow that I suggest, then you actually get to enjoy the photos when you, when you go back and you say, oh, you know what? I remember there was this really fantastic sunset and I really had a great time shooting it. And I'm pretty sure a few of those shots, you know, are probably worth posting on Flickr or, you know, maybe I'll, I'll have it um, printed and framed or something like that. So that when you do go and, and, and do that editing and do that, that, that exploration, like you remember the, the, the joy of taking it and the whole point of doing it in the first place, rather than photo, digital photo management being, oh, all right, I took a whole bunch of pictures, maybe I'll look at them in a couple months and then you never do and you're like okay so what's the whole point in, in, in the first place today's edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by lynda.com the unparalleled online training library get a free full 10 day trial at lynda.com slash Mac Voices in case you hadn't noticed there's a lot going on in the Apple tech world right now Apple has updated the Mac OS to El Capitan iOS 9 is gaining more adoption each day and has lots of interesting new features, including some specifically designed for the iPhone 6S and iPhone 6S Plus. And let's not forget about Apple Watch, which extends Apple Tech into the wearables space. There's a lot to keep up with, and there is, as you might expect, lots more coming. That's one reason you should look to lynda.com as an excellent source of training on all of these changes. With lynda.com, you can get an introduction to Mac OS X El Capitan's new features to get you up to speed quickly, or watch Mac OS X El Capitan Essential Training to go a bit more in-depth with the new OS. For your iPhone and iPad, there's lynda.com's iOS 9 Essential Training to make sure that you're taking full advantage of all that the new mobile OS has to offer, whether you're running it on the latest iPhone or iPad, or on a legacy device. If you've just invested in an Apple Watch, then you're going to want to watch both up and running with Apple Watch, as well as Apple Watch OS 2 new features, so that you know all about the latest additions to your device. That's what's available now as I record this, and the odds are that there will be more titles in very short order. How do I know that? Because lynda.com adds new courses every week. They are approaching 4,000 titles and might be there by the time you hear this. But lynda.com doesn't just focus on Apple tech. In fact, they don't just focus on tech. lynda.com is a great place to get training on business, education, video production, and more. With lynda.com, one subscription gets you access to the entire library. So you might start with the OS 9 course, but veer off into accounting. Or watch an Apple Watch video, then decide you want to know more about leadership. No limits, no restrictions, no silos, just an amazing library of knowledge and information that is yours for the watching. You're going to get excited about what you can learn, what you will want to learn with lynda.com. To get started and find out just how much fun learning can be, sign up for a free 10-day trial at lynda.com slash macvoices that gives you access to all of the courses I mentioned, plus a whole lot more. Watch as many as you want during your trial, then sign up and keep going. Whether it's for business or personal development, lynda.com is a resource you can't ignore. Again, lynda.com slash Mac Voices gets you a full free 10-day trial. Do it now and be learning in just a couple minutes. 
That's lynda.com slash macvoices for access to their unparalleled training library. Thanks to lynda.com for supporting Mac Voices. Actually, I'm, I'm going to ask you to touch on one more thing before we yeah, wrap yeah. it up because you, you you sort of did, and I and I was curious. Do you do you talk about any util- tagging utilities or whatever you mentioned that you can put some of the metadata in as you import them? Are there are there utilities out there that can help you tag? I mean, obviously they're going to be a bit more manual than the the scan that Google is doing. But is yeah. there a way to do this that maybe is just a, a less painful enough that I will actually actually do it? <laughs> um, uh, yes and no. The- I, oh, I don't really. <laughs> uh, how much pain can you stand? That is what we ask. ask. <laughs> um, uh, so I, I don't touch on any like like standalone tagging utilities, with the exception of um, if you're dealing with with uh, uh, geotagged images. Um, there's some interesting wrinkles there where um, uh, if you have. Let's say you're you're shooting with with um, a DSLR that has no way to, to capture your location, but you also have an iPhoto. Um, one of the things that I do pretty much any time I'm shooting with with a you know non iPhone camera, um, I will also take a picture at that location with with the iPhone because then I can capture that that image or that that location data. Um, so, so then, when you import that and the DSLR pictures, there's a there's an easy way to do it in Lightroom. So you can just copy that that um, the geotag and apply it to all the other photos that were that were taken at the same place. Um, you can do that also with um, uh, photos and Photoshop elements, but because of the way photos is written, you can't do it within photos and and there's a whole section in there about the the um i would say challenging limitations of 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 the the geotagging uh features in photos um and so the the solution to that is first import all the photos onto your hard drive using something like um, image capture the image camper capture application on your on uh, on the Mac um, and then run it through a program like Huda Geo which lets you um, copy and and apply tags so you do that to all the images and then import them into Lightroom or photos or whatever um, so I don't have any specific like you know tagging only recommendations um, uh, you know, in in years past, I would say, you know, if you're if you're doing a whole lot of stuff like, let's say, you're processing on your iPad um, before you even get to your Mac, and you can add some tags. Um, there was a an app called Photosmith that would do that, and a, an app called Photos Info Pro. Um, neither one of them have been updated in a long time, and um, it's it's just not as as ideal. So. Um, you know, I I definitely touch on like like how to do the tagging and and how to make it pain free, um, just not with like like specific uh, apps. Okay, I, nice. I I kind of thought that there had been some glorious all in one solution. You would have mentioned it by now. So yeah, yeah, it's too bad. I mean, I mean, you know, my you know, in in terms of, of tagging and stuff, um, one of the reasons I really like Lightroom is because it lets you say you know. Um, as as I'm importing this, apply you know as many keywords as you want to throw into it, so that I know um, you know it, if I just spend a, a day uh, in the you know rainforest, um, I can add a bunch of tags for you know uh, forest, rainforest, moss, cloudy, you know uh, rain, things like that, um, and those just get added during the import process. I don't have to take a secondary step and and then you know remember to tag things later so you know that that kind of stuff makes it easy so that you don't have to um you know be burdened with that oh geez i forgot to tag these things i'll get to it later kind of a situation so as we always do how about the book itself uh how many pages is this what kind of pricing do we have and do you know anything about the upgrade policy for the the owners of the first book, that is a fantastic question for Tanya. Um, 
Um, and, and, I'll, uh, so, and I'll get her on the phone right now. <laughs> exactly. So um, uh, it, it's running about 100 and, uh, 130 pages. Um, I, I can't remember the exact number offhand. I don't have the, the final PDF. Um, but um, it, it, it's about that. Um, it is a, uh, I want to say, $15 ebook. Um, but um, the, Take Control is doing some sort of, of bundle pricing. Um, because uh, Jason Snell's update to his Photos for Mac uh, crash course um, is also coming out at the same time. And so right now, I don't know exactly what they, they've planned for that. Um, it'll probably be, be worked out by the time yeah. this airs. <laughs> well, and, and the bundles thing, you know, that's something Take Control has become known for. So there's there's yeah. always a bundle of, of one kind or another. And yeah. the upgrades to, from one edition to another are very reasonable, if not free. So if you're an owner of the book, as as I think Tanya would say, you know, check check the cover of the book. It, mm -hmm. it, it'll tell you that there's an yeah. update available and all that. So, But yeah, I, I always like to ask for the page count just because I, I think it's important. We, we covered a lot of topics here. And mm -hmm. You cover a lot of topics in the book, but it's it's not like you said at the beginning, you know, where you're falling asleep because there's so so much. <laughs> you really boil them down and kind of try to give folks the, the best advice in short order to help them develop the workflows and identify the important things and the compromises they have to deal with. Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, in fact, um, I think overall, I would have to go back and check the the, the, the PDF files. Um, this book may actually be a little bit shorter than the first one because we uh, had to pull out all the iPhoto and Aperture specific information, even though it you know it's replaced by by photos, um, and and replaced by the the whole brand new section on on doing online stuff. Um, but for example, um, there was a chapter about migrating from iPhotos and Aperture to Lightroom, um, and the the chapter is still there, um, but most of the I would say, actually, all all of the previous content is gone because in the in the like about I think a year ago, right after Apple announced that they uh, were discontinuing iPhoto and Aperture, um, Adobe built an a, a import helper tool. Um, so you know where before there was a whole lot of workarounds to get metadata out of iPhoto, um, you know now using Adobe's tool, it's not perfect, but boy, it's a whole lot easier than than the stuff that that you know we, we had to do too too long years ago. <laughs> you know, I think I almost owe you an apology for my opening comments too, because I sort of forgot about all, all that has changed, even with with the big boys, with Aperture and iPhoto going away mm. and photos coming in, and yeah. you know, then some of the services that uh, would would maintain your photos disappearing. So yeah, two years. To you, a lot has happened in two years. Yeah, well, it you know it's 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 crazy because um, you know digital photography itself has has you know shaken up the whole photography realm so much, and yet even in such a small period of time, there have been a, a lot of changes, and um, you know, and that's we we have to keep up. So um, it's it's I mean it's you know it, it's it, it's good to keep up. I think I think we're still going forward. Um, I know a, a lot of people who who use Aperture may disagree, um, but at the same time, um, you can still use iPhoto and Aperture. Um, they're just no longer they're just no longer being supported or updated, and so um, you know, Apple Apple is Apple. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well. So, and you know, I, and I, I'm, I'm again for some reason we turned this into a big Google Google dis discussion. Yeah, nope, can't talk. But there there are new services, new capabilities coming on board out there that we get more faster, better hardware. You get better software. You get people that are thinking, as you said, about different ways to do things semi automatically with your photos or the material you create. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's, it, you just you got to keep up with it unless you just decide that you are completely happy having all your photos in a shoebox under the bed, and mm -hmm. then you don't have to worry about any of it. The rest, but if 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 you're not happy with that, then you do have to pay attention to some of this, or you're missing opportunities. 
Yeah. And, you know, I mean, the, 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 the honest truth is um, there are more people taking more photos than ever before. And, you know, that, that sounds like marketing hype, but just, you know, the, the, the popularity of the iPhone and other smartphones where, you know, some people who never even dreamed that they would be, a, you know, photographers, you know, you, you put that in quotes, the, a photographer, um, they are photographers because they're taking pictures of, you know, anything and everything. And so, you know, it, it, it's not like, like this is just a, a niche demand where, um, you know, only photographers need to manage their photos. It's like, no, actually, you know, like we all now have thousands of photos. It doesn't matter if you consider yourself a photographer, um, you know, like, like you have a camera with you, most likely, for, you know, everybody does. And that, you know, goes from taking little snapshots of, of, of the moment. Uh, it applies to, you know, taking a picture of, uh, you know, a, a sign so you can remember something. You want to, you know, take a picture of your parking spot so you remember how to get back to your car. All that, all that little stuff. And then you have people that are like, oh, well, you know, this is, this is a a perfectly good camera and look at that. The sky looks beautiful. I'm going to take a picture of that. And so boom, like you're a photographer and, and that gives all of us, uh, you know, even more files, more photos, more stuff that we need to take control of. Um, sorry, wasn't trying to <laughs> get the name in there, but you know, um, so the, even in the last two years, you know, so many more people are, are, you know, running into these problems of, you know, my, my device is filled up with pictures. What do I do with them? Uh, you know, I want to be able to share this whole, this easily. How can I do that? Oh, well, you know, Google steps in and say, Oh, we, we have a way that we'll just automatically upload your photos. Um, uh, I don't actually mention this in the book, but, um, carousel, uh, Dropbox's app um, has a feature that will it'll like scan your your iPhone and say you know you can free up you know 200 megabytes of of space by deleting some photos that have already been uploaded you know so you know like our 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 needs and our expectations because of all of this this mobile technology um, directly influences photography and it's 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 needed. I think that may be one of the most important points uh, as, as we're wrapping, <laughs> as we're wrapping yeah. it up literally sort of as an afterthought. But yeah, because I know I, I was looking for at my own photo library on my phone that just the photos that have been taken on the phone. And mm -hmm. it, it was a little surprising. It's like, wow, how did all those photos get there? So you start scrolling through <laughs> and thinking, well, I can get rid of these. And yeah, there's, there's, there are very few I want to get rid of. So yeah. you don't realize, and, and it's a problem you're right that everybody's going to have, especially since we've gotten these fantastic cameras on our phones. Now you yeah. have one everywhere, and and you're you're right. I mean this this has become as much a camera for me as just a digital notepad. Where, oh, you know, yeah. yeah, I want to remember what you know what size of screw that is that I've got to go to the hardware store and buy. Snap a picture, yeah. you know, and that way I don't take it with me and lose it, which is really kind of nice. <laughs> so you know, there, there's just so many uses for photos. And, you know, after I buy that screw, well, then I don't need the photo, but that means management it means right. I've got to find a way to delete it. So, yeah, in interesting stuff. Yeah. So take control of your digital photos on your Mac, takecontrolbooks.com. Jeff Carlson, thanks so much for the time. It's, it's been a great discussion. Absolutely. I love talking about this stuff. Thank you. Uh, we'll do it again. Good. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. I'm going to go manage the photos on my phone. I hope you do too, <laughs> but only after reading Jeff's book. Until the next time, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for links, show notes, to subscribe, to connect with Chuck on Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and the Mac Voices blog. Subscribe to our weekly newsletter, the Mac Voices Dispatch, to stay up to date on all the latest Mac Voices news from our front page or at macvoices.com slash newsletter. Do more with your Apple tech by subscribing to the free Mac Voices magazine on Flipboard by visiting macvoices.com slash magazine. Advertising and sponsorships handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. 
bandwidth provided by CashFly at CashFly.com. 